In 2018, Arsene Wenger finally left Arsenal after years of Wenger outcries from the fans. But they're yet to take off in his absence, with Unai Emery getting sacked and Mikel Arteta coming in. But what did Football Manager 2015 predict for the Gunners by the summer of 2020? Let's find out. Well, in our simulation, Arsene Wenger left the Emirates a lot earlier, resigning from his post in the summer of 2015. But he left with a bang, finally lifting the Champions League in his final game ever as a manager. It was an incredible ending for Wenger, and Arsenal had a big job replacing him, first stopping for Roberto Mancini. And the Italian would spend three seasons in the dugout, eventually getting the sack in the summer of 2018. He started well though, winning the Super Cup and Club World Cup before lifting the FA Cup in 2016. That was as good as it got though, and Mancini got the boot after almost three years in charge. Next up was Slavin Bilic who didn't nearly last as long, and didn't have the same success either. The Croatian didn't win a single trophy and was sacked in February 2020. So to complete the final season of the simulation, Arsenal brought in another Italian, former AC Milan striker Filippo Inzaghi. He seems to have steadied the ship but it was unable to deliver Champions League football, ending his first year once in charge fifth in the Premier League. That is Arsenal's lowest finish of the simulation which isn't too bad really, playing a lot more Champions League football than they have in reality. Oh, and there was also a takeover in North London, with Stan Kroenke getting bought out in March 2019. But back to the 2019-20 season, and the Gunners ended the campaign with a 3-1 win over Southampton, so let's look at who started for them. In goal was Wojciech Szczesny. Arsenal's number one goalkeeper for most of the simulation, the Polish stopper didn't secure the big move to Juventus that he got in real life. But at Arsenal, his averages haven't been too impressive, mainly getting high sixes, which is alright I suppose, but I'd maybe want a bit more from my goalkeeper. He's an Arsenal veteran though, and is set to be on with a testimonial ahead of the new season. Back up to him is Daniel Bentley, who has performed brilliantly when called upon. Right back is Callum Chambers. A current gunner who is still at the Emirates in the simulation as well, Chambers has played a lot more than in reality, not going out on loan once to a team further down the division. Chambers has been consistent but unspectacular in red, and he's done enough to be something of an England regular, so far writing up 48 caps for his country. Chambers had been competing with Matthew Debushi, but he left the club in 2018 for Everton. Centre back is Kyriakos Papadopoulos. Arsenal had a Greek centre back at the heart of the defence on this day, but it wasn't Socrates, it was Kyriakos Papadopoulos. Unfortunately for him, he's been a bit part player since his £20 million move from Schalke to Arsenal, but has done well over his 12 appearances this season. He was alongside Sven van Beek. A Dutch defender who arrived in the summer of 2019, Van Beek is another player who has played sporadically over the year and hasn't been too impressive to be honest with you. He's also Callum Chambers' backup on the right of defence, so it seems as though he's just a utility man there to fill the holes when needed. Arsenal have got a plethora of centre backs who would likely start over these two, such as Stephen Corker who has been bafflingly good, Nicolas Sula who has just arrived for 12 million pounds from Atletico Madrid and Nicolas Nkulu, the man who now captains Arsenal has been consistently solid in defence for the Gunners. Oh, and they've also got Eric Dyer, weirdly, who's just chilling out in the reserves. Left back was Alberto Moreno. The former Liverpool horror show was Arsenal's main man on the left side of defence, and to be fair, he's been well worth the £80 million he cost. But it was Fiorentina who he bought them from, having left Liverpool in 2017. Moreno has helped himself to a fair few assists whilst marauding down the left flank, keeping Aaron Cresswell out the side, who Arsenal also spent big money on, costing £14 million from West Ham. Christ have spent a lot of money on left backs. Holding midfield was Andreas Christensen. A centre back by design, Andreas Christensen was oddly operating a midfield on this day against Southampton, but he actually did pretty well, getting a 7.4 rating. The Danish international isn't Arsenal's main holy midfielder, that goes to Lewis Cook, a £10 million signing from Leeds in 2019, who played 28 times last season and performed pretty damn well, and he's doing it all with Henri's famous number 14 on his back. Centre midfield is Yuri Tielemans. A £3.7 million pound signing from Manchester United, Yuri Tielemans sadly isn't very good on Football Manager 2015. That's why Man United stole him for buttons and that's why he's barely played for Arsenal, although weirdly he's a target for Barcelona. But he got a rare start on the final day of the season, just his fourth all year. That's because Arsenal still have Aaron Ramsey who's their main man in midfield and actually listed as their key player. Now aged 29, Ramsey has been instrumental for the Gunners, getting double figures and assists four seasons in a row. However, injury ruled him out of the season closer against the Saints. Tielemans is alongside Morgan Schneiderlin. 
Signed in 2015 for £24 million from Southampton following the Champions League triumph, Morgan Schneiderlin has been Vieira-esque in midfield for Arsenal, well worth the investment and proving that it was very highly rated by the guys at Football Manager five years ago. He's entering the final year of his contract at the Emirates and you can only imagine people when Zaghi will give him a new deal. Another option Arsenal have got in the middle is Mesut Ozil, but with the system currently being used, the German often doesn't feature. On the right wing is Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. He scored within the first minute on the final day of the season against Southampton and that was one of seven goals he managed to get in the Premier League. He's been pretty good during the simulation, chipping in with his fair share of goals and assists from out wide and taking home £180,000 a week for the privilege. Theo Walker is still at Arsenal as well but doesn't play too much and doesn't score or assist much either, so this part of the simulation is pretty realistic. On the left wing was Denis Suarez. The club's joint highest earner alongside Aaron Ramsey on £225,000 a week, Denis Suarez was a marquee arrival for Arsenal in 2017 from Barcelona, costing £23 million. And he's been worth it, getting goals and assists. He had 10 Premier League goals last season, his best personal tally. But he faces strong opposition down the left, as Alexis Sanchez is still at the Emirates. The Chilean superstar has been just as impressive as Suarez, showing the Gunners have real depth down the left. Sanchez continues to act as a talisman for Arsenal, with no disastrous move to Manchester United and no piano performance on the horizon. And up front is Carlos. A 24-year-old Brazilian who cost Arsenal £15 million in 2017, Carlos scored twice on the final day for the Gunners, ending his third season with his best tally of 15 goals. He's been decent in front of goal to be honest, but probably not the lethal marksman they need to go back to the top of the Premier League. In reality, Carlos is playing in Portugal, but not to the standard football manager 2015 has him at. However, he might have a challenger on his way, with Arsenal signing Italian striker Federico Benazzoli, a man who scored a ton of goals for Sampdoria. Oh, and, and Danny Welbeck's there as well. That's nice. So that's Arsenal in 2020 according to Football Manager 2015. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo, and until next time, we'll see you around.